A lot of data science professionals found it very difficult to write production grade code considering that they initially create a proof of concept using Jupyter Notebook. So finally, we have debugging capabilities of code in Jupyter itself. So this video gives you a clear picture of the debugging capabilities that exist in Jupyter as on March 2020. So let's start by first creating two lists. I have my first list as list 1 and I have my second list as list 2. Now what I want to achieve as part of next steps is I want to do an element wise addition of two lists and store it into the empty list that I've created. So what I mean to say by that is I want to add 1 and 5, I want to add 2 and 6, 3 and 7, 4 and 8 and append the values into summed underscore list. For accomplishing that is what I've written this piece of code. Now a lot of times we find it difficult to understand what the values are, what is the type of data that we have when we consider say a zipped object or a pandas data frame or a pandas series. It is where the debugging capabilities of Jupyter would help us create better code while creating the proof of concept or a POC itself. So that is where this would come in really handy. In order to access the debugging capability of Jupyter, I first need to enable it. So you can enable it by clicking the debugger option here and essentially in the backend you will have a debugger that would have been initiated. In order to properly debug your code and understand the control flow of your program, I add a simple breakpoint in line number 2 of this corresponding cell. Now once the breakpoint has been added, what I do next is I run the cell. So essentially it wouldn't run the entire thing. It would now go step by step and give me an output at the particular breakpoint that I've stopped the output at. Let me expand this and let me remove some sections that are not very relevant in terms of debugging. So I lower this breakpoint value down as well. And I keep the call stack and the variables open. As you can clearly see, I have the variable option open as well. So I'll have variables in terms of what the variables are at this particular execution point. I'll have a list one which is a list and it tells me the content of the list as well. I have the second list in hand as well which consists of values 5, 6, 7 and 8. Then I have a summed list which is currently empty because I have not appended any value here. And now what I do next is go to the next step. So essentially what I've done is I've captured item which is nothing else but a tuple. So essentially if I expand this, this is what I observe. I have two items in my tuple that is 1 and 5 which correspond to the first element of the two list, list 1 and list 2. And now when I go to the next step, it creates a variable called as temp underscore sum and assigns it a value 6 which corresponds to the addition of 1 and 5 which was stored in the tuple that we had previously which is 1 comma 5. Now if I do a next, my sum list would have been appended with a value of 6. So let me open this and I'll have my first element as 6 appended into my summed underscore list. Now I've reached the line 1 in order to go to the next item or in order to catch hold of the next set of list values, I click on next. So the for loop statement has been executed and here is where I expect my tuple values that is my item value to change. So this is what is observed here as well. The item values have changed from 1 and 5 to 2 and 6. Now again if I click on next, I essentially would have the temp underscore sum equated to a value of 8. And when I run the cell again or when I click on next, the list would have been appended with the value of 8 which I just calculated. And in order to just check if we are on the same track or not, I open summed underscore list and you will see values of 6 and 8. Now if I keep clicking next, next, all the steps would execute one step at a time and you can actually visualize the output in terms of are you getting the right value or not. Now the entire flow of execution of this cell is over so that is why you don't see anything here. And now when I run this cell, I get the output of the summed underscore list which is 6, 8, 10 and 12 which corresponds to the element wise addition of the two list that I just created. 
So finally, we have reached a stage wherein we can make use of debugging inside Jupyter itself, which is like a big plus for a lot of people who create POCs first and then write production level code. So this was my attempt at explaining how you can utilize the debugging option that is available in Jupyter. I discovered the news of debugging capabilities in Jupyter from Jupyter's official blog on Medium. So I'll attach the link to the blog in the description section of the video. Do check it out as well. I hope you found this video informative. If you do have any questions with what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. If you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then the easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone whom you think would find them useful. Please consider clicking the subscribe button to be notified for future videos. And thank you all for watching the video.